It always makes me laugh when people say, well, why do you have an E in whiskey? Um, and it's very simple because um, we're making whiskey um, the Scottish way, double distillation um, with Scottish stills in Ireland because Ireland produces the best barley in the world. And, you know, Waterford is a project based on natural flavours and where they come from. Um, and it's very clear that whiskey's flavour comes from barley. So it makes sense to go where the barley is best. So it's Mark Renier from Waterford Distillery. Thank you for being with us. Good evening. And um, uh, you opened Waterford Distillery how long ago? <laughs> um, 2015. Tell, yeah. 2015. Yeah, we bought it. In, it it's a brewery, if you remember. We yeah. bought a brewery yeah. because that's where you liberate the flavor from the barley mm -hmm. in brewing. And since then, if I may ask, what was the biggest learning you had from, from this <laughs> seven years now? Well, well I, 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 many things, but I think that the, the biggest surprise, terroir wasn't a surprise. We knew that. I, I, I proved it in, uh, at Brook Laddy. Um, we proved it academically. Um, that wasn't a surprise. But what was, um, uh, was a discovery that the variety made no difference. That all the modern varieties um, that had been propagated since the early 70s came from the same parents that were selected at the time as cousins, there were two genetically similar. Mm. So, so flavor has not advanced since the early 70s. The yield has, the yield off the field, the yield off, you know, off the still, uh, the climate adaptability. Um, these things have all advanced, you know, low straw uh, varieties, which, which are more, more like a, a brush, if you think of a brush, more stiff and therefore less are likely to be blown over, um, tillering as it's called. Um, but the sad thing is that when you ask the Research Institute about flavour, they go, well, yeah, what a great idea. No one asked us to look at the flavour. And I think that's what I find the most um, startling discovery, that we've wasted 50 years of potential flavour evolution. Because remember, we're, you know, we're obliged to use these, these varieties that mm. are uh, developed each year um, by the industry. Um, it's a bit of a cartel. Um, and I just think that's, okay, sure, yes, it's, you know, everybody's benefit, disease resistance, etc., cetera, and, 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 and uh, yield. But, but as I said, you know, I'm interested in natural flavor. We have a cereal that produces the most flavoursome whiskey in the world, the famous spirit in the world, mm. um, single malt whiskey. Um, and it just is a, a, um, a shock to me that, that, you know, an industry that has the benefit of this variety um, doesn't appear to be interested in where that flavour comes from. So you say, although the development has always been about yield, there mm. could be development regarding flavour. Correct. Yeah. They could have, we've wasted 50 years. Okay. So, so I'm now having to go back mm. into the annals, go back to, to back, to go forward, back mm. to the future, to look at the varieties that were famous in the past for flavor mm. um, and go back and resurrect them to see what those flavors are. Is there something like a library of old barley well, varieties? Yes, there is. Uh, um, the, the, the Ministry of Agriculture in Ireland very kindly let us a have access to mm. their seed bank, which is kept in a, in a basement, a cupboard, where they have um, 50 grams of each of the, or 100 grams of each of the uh, varieties, um, historic varieties. And we took 50 grams, which is basically a sachet, Mm -hmm. um, of three varieties plus the original um, um, land race, the, the original wild variety from the Middle Ages. Um, and we've propagated those and it's no mean feat. It, 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 it takes from 50 grams to a kilo, a kilo to 100 kilos, 100 kilos to a ton before you have enough to be able to actually uh, cultivate. So this project's been going on now for five years. Um, and 
what we found, uh, the first one we bottled up is just now, we just released it, is uh, Hunter, um, which forms part of the Heritage mm -hmm. uh, Barley Range under the Arcadian um, uh, um, banner. Um, and what we found, uh, you know, you get an idea of just, just what's gone missing in 50 years. Mm -hmm. So we're going back to 1960 to get an idea of you know, partly of what whiskey used to taste like um, and partly you know, to, to, to try and imagine what, you know, what we could have done in 50 years if flavour had been um, more at the forefront. Let's talk about another part of mm. flavour impressions and that's peat. And let's talk about this because you brought two new uh, bottlings. Well, that's a, again part of the Arcadian. Yeah. Uh, as, as you know, as I've, it, 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 we talked about before, yeah. uh, um, Waterford is the three, there's three parts. Mm -hmm. Everything is single farm. Those are our building blocks, mm -hmm. 35 of them a year. Um, and they're split into two uh, groups. One is what we would call regenerative farming, mm -hmm. modern farming. Right. Um, and the other is what we call Arcadian farming so the old ways mm -hmm. um, and then together they come to create uh, the cuvee so those are the three parts you know regenerative farming um, arcadian farming and then uh, the assemblage for complexity mm -hmm. which is the cuvee or micro cuvees um, so there's three parts so mm -hmm. the arcadian is made up of heritage barley varieties um, organic farming methods biodynamic farming methods and yes peated mm -hmm. um, methods now the, the, in ireland peated whiskey um, would have been uh, like the west coast of scotland the the dominant variety in rural ireland um, back in the 19th and 18th and 17th centuries and before um, but it sort of came to an abrupt end um, almost a hundred years ago uh, with the um, independence of Ireland and the loss of the British Empire markets and the collapse, the subsequent collapse of Irish distilling. Mm -hmm. And therefore the lack of uh, the ability to actually malt barley uh, using peat, um, it just ended. So, so um, you know, Irish distillers that had a monopoly um, during the 70s and the 80s and the 90s um, never produced peated whiskey. Um, so uh, subsequent to that, uh, one or two people have imported um, uh, um, non-Irish but peated overseas. Mm -hmm. um, fine. Uh, we, in the spirit of our um, uh, principles of, of traceability and, and terroir, uh, terroir traceable and transparent. So in, those, uh, in that esprit, um, we took two of our single farms um, that were about 15 kilometers apart. And in between them, um, the peat fields, so we took the peat from the, uh, so it's Irish peat, Irish barley from two different farms and peated them. Uh, fundamentally to, 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 to have an idea of A, again, what was Irish whiskey like mm. back in the day? Um, secondly, does the idea of terroir um, sustain peat? Or does peat dominate um, terroir? So a, a, an exercise okay. to see, you know, what what happens? Because I think a lot of people would would imagine that peat just dominates everything. But you know, I, I think you'll be rather surprised to see that it's not the case. Yeah. That the and which which further supports our principles mm. of terroir, which is that those. 2,000 flavor compounds are immutable. They're in the barley and mm. they're there, not going anywhere. So, so 
uh, um, what we can demonstrate is two terroir, two distinctively different whiskies, albeit they've been you know, malted and, and, and fermented and uh, distilled and barreled and bottled the same. Mm. So I, I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, um, exercise for, for, for the doubters out there, you know, the, the people, oh no, terroir, you know, blah, blah. well, you know, here you go, mate. Here's two, you know, it's there, all the details there. You mm. can check up the, 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 the data on the back of, on the terroir code to, 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 to verify what I've just said, what I've just uh, said. You can validate it. Mm. Um, and that terroir trumps the peat. And these are peated, you know, 40, uh, around 40 parts per million. Okay. Uh, you know, I love peat by heart. You know, mm. mainland peat from Scotland by mm. heart. You now know Irish peat by mm. heart. What's the difference between them in structure, in, in composition? Oh, well, I, I, they, they are different. And, and, and we knew that before, you know, the Orkney peat is, is, is different to West Coast peat. Yeah. Uh, um, and this is more to do with the, the flora and the, the, mm. the, the, the fauna, uh, um, the flora that, that, that the peat was made from mm. uh, uh, um, and how degraded that peat is. But most of the peat we're talking about is from the last ice age, after the last ice age. Right. So most of it's been formed in the last 10,000 years. Uh, um, and it tends to be what sort of peat is used, whether it's the upper layer or the lower layer. Uh, um, and how deep that peat is um, on Isler, you know, it's it's no more than a, a meter and a half, yeah. two at most, before you're onto the bedrock. Uh, um, in in Orkney, uh, uh, um, it's similar. In Ar in Ireland, it's much deeper. It's it, it's it's a, a blanket bog. Right. It's called. It's it's where peat is actually sort of you know the the the, the plants have grown upwards out of a bog. Mm. So the, the, the layers, the, the, the depth of peat is much, much greater. Um, and <clears throat> clearly, if you use the upper layers, the, the brown peat, the, the more root mm -hmm. or racinated, uh, less composed, uh, um, it's not so good. Um, you need to go to the black stuff, the black hydrated stuff underneath, where there's almost no uh, um, uh, um, evidence of roots at all anymore. Uh, and that and that tends to produce, you know, is best for for peating barley, where you're not wanting heat, um, you're wanting. Uh, um, 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 what well, I mean by that, you, you, you're not using peat because of its heat. Of You'd use coal. Uh, no, you're using it because of the smoke mm. and the fact that 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 sort of phenolically rich uh, smoke sticks to the grain. Um, it doesn't go into it; it sticks to it and pervades all the way through after fermentation etc mm. so that's you know this is the point i'm trying to make about the barley's intrinsic flavor compounds mm. the terroir derived compounds yeah they do not change they don't change the, they're there the peat, you, uh, it has a blanket of peat around okay. it okay that's very interesting and we're going to taste your two new bottlings today mm. and, and the heritage and the and heritage, heritage hunter barley perfect Tell me about the, the heritage hunter barley. That's what you said. That's the old one, the sixty years. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, um, so 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 uh, uh, hunter was a was a uh, uh, agronomist mm -hmm. in Ireland, um, and he is credited with uh, um, uh, uh, selecting selectively breeding uh, this variety, and the reason we chose it, along with from that's from nineteen sixty. Um, next year, we'll, we'll show you the Goldthorpe, which is from 1900, and then Spratt Archer, and then back to the Middle Ages. Um, because I, I, I find it very interesting. At, at Brookladdy, uh, I was lucky enough mm. to meet uh, um, uh, a professor of, of agronomy up in uh, Orkney. Um, and we were, and he offered, um, he suggested to me that he was, he had this ability to, to uh, propagate um, um, an ancient, the originator of mm. barley, um, Bear, which is B-E-R-E. -E. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, barley is Anglo-Saxon for bear-like. Um, and that's, that's where we get it. So, so the, the precursor uh, to um, modern barley. And 
it was a thing, you know, you know, if you grow it, I'll buy it. Mm. Now, that's the arrangement we had. And that was fascinating to, 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 to explore a totally different flavor profile. Um, and so it, it, it makes you realize that, you know, that there is something out there that, that you know, these flavors, it gives you that, that, that sort of idea you know, that the way whiskey would have tasted like was very different to what it is today. Yeah. And, and it, it wouldn't have been all about sort of, uh, um, um, you know, finishes and this. It was, it was, it was far more about the, the, you know, the primary origin, mm. which is barley. And I, 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 it still tickles me now um, to explore those uh, um, lost flavors. Um, I, you know, why are we doing it? We're doing it because um, I'm intrigued. Um, what did whiskey taste like? And fundamentally, you know, if I if we can identify what those flavors are, right, using modern science, modern technology, well, then perhaps we can make our own variety of barley, a sort of greatest hits of you know flavor of the past, and you know using you know low straw modern mm -hmm. barley. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you know if if the industry is not interested. Perhaps we can make a flavoursome uh, um, barley variety. So that you know, there's method to to what what we're doing here. As always, we are way over time, but because it's so interesting, <laughs> let me ask you a final question. When you got this hunter barley, yeah, yeah, did you think about matching the barley with a special soil? Did how did you decide who will grow it? Uh, we, we we well first of all we needed farmers that were prepared to uh, um, to do it so yeah. so obviously and we have to compensate them you know for the low yields uh, um, uh, 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 otherwise it it, it, mm. it wouldn't would uh, um, uh, um, so Seamus Duggan is the is the guy that sort of helped us do this um, but what we have found is that our biodynamic farmers when we gave them hunter to grow instead of modern varieties, mm -hmm. the yields went up. Did they? The yields went up by 20%. And of course, if you think about it, you know, biodynamics is basically farming before the agrochemical industry. So, you know, before a hundred and something years ago, everything was organic. Everything was biodynamic. Back to the, you know, the end of the last ice age. You know, it's not new. It's 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 accumulated farming know-how before the agrochemical industry arrived. So, give them an old variety with old farming methodology, and it's going to work better. So, I, I suppose it's not that surprising mm -hmm. um, that that biodynamics with modern the modern varieties we're obliged to use it works less effectively than old varieties, which was more akin to. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Mark, thank you for sharing your insights with oh, us. Pleasure, man. It was a pleasure with us, as always, and see you soon. Lots no. more where that came from. <laughs>